Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. This will be the last of this series of the faithful and wise servant. Somebody's like, yes. <laughs> no, it's just all jokes. But this will be the last of the faithful and wise servant. How many really enjoyed this series? Amen. Of the faithful and wise servant. How many of you learned something? Amen. How many of you have questions? Ask me later. <laughs> Ask me later. Praise the Lord. All right. So what I want to do tonight, I want to go back to our theme scripture. And what I'm going to do in this closing of the faithful and wise servant is I'm going to bring up some scriptures because we talked about how our Lord. Amen. We're waiting for our Lord. How many are waiting for the Lord? Amen. My life is proof that I'm waiting for the Lord because I'm living as if today is the day of his return. Amen. I'm waiting and I'm looking. Amen. The Lord, he don't have to come find me. Amen. Good to see you, Lord. I've been waiting. Amen. Praise God. But how I have this set up tonight is we're going to go over, from, over some scriptures that I have from Paul the Apostle. Amen. And um, what is this going to explain is what I wanted to show you within scripture of how we are, are to be found when the Lord comes back. Amen. And then there's he shares in the scriptures of the Lord coming back or how we must be ready. Amen. As that day approaches. But first, let me read this. I just got to read this because this was the theme scripture. He said, therefore. Be ye also ready. Oh, man, here we go again. It's doing it again. Y'all It's doing it again. Okay, therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. The hour that you don't think he's coming. The hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. But he said, who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household? To give them meat in due season. He said, blessed is that servant. How many of you know that you're a blessed servant? You are a blessed servant of God. I'm a blessed servant. Whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find him doing. Amen. Doing what he was left supposed to be doing. Amen. All right. And that's what we're going to get into. Some of those things. Okay. But he said, verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But, and if that evil servant, uh-oh. He said, but if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming. And he shall begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and to drink with the drunken. I don't think you're going to be found doing with the Lord here. <laughs> All right. Because when you're drunken, you're not aware. Right here, he says we need to be aware and we need to wait. Amen. Your perception is off when you're drunken. So he ain't waiting. He just said, Lord's not coming yet. So. <laughs> All right. Anyway. He said, the Lord of that servant shall the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him and in an hour that he is not aware of and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. Man, so. Can once saved always save fit in this scripture? Apparently he was saved. And was a servant. Once saved, always. That don't look like once saved, always saved. Hello. We're saved because we believe, right? 
And but because we believe, we produce works that we believe. Not that we're saved by the works, but because we're saved, we produce works. Amen. We live the life, amen, that's required for us to live. Amen. We live a new life. And so if I'm saved because I believe, and my faith has to have those works that I believe. Amen. Faith has works. And so I believe, and my works are showing that I believe. Right? So if my works aren't meeting up with what the Bible says I should be doing or should be believing the way that I should live, I should, if, if the Bible says I need to be doing this and I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it because I'm not really believing in it. You see what I'm saying? So our belief has to line up with what's written. And so if my belief is not lining up with what's written and I'm not living what's written, I mean what's written, that means I don't believe. So can you be a believer that doesn't believe? How can you be a believer that doesn't believe? If you believe, I mean, in, in that with Jesus, you know, think about the disciples or the, those that stopped believing in him. What if the Lord just turned them, but don't you, don't you believe? Don't you believe in God? Don't you want to, you know? Yo, no, we believe in God, but Jesus, we just don't believe in you no more. <laughs> we, we, you know. But he's like, but don't, don't y'all believe? But they're walking from the source. They're walking away from the source. They're walking away from the only way. You see what I'm saying? And so you can't have God without Jesus because he's the righteousness of God. I mean, he's our righteousness. Amen? So what I'm simply saying is if we believe or say that we're believers, then we have to show that through application of the scriptures. Because Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, but he said, if you continue in my word, amen, if you continue. So the words that he says, hello, we'd be like, Lord, your word is true. I believe I'm going to apply it to my life. But if I hear it and I don't apply it, it's because I believe my ways are more sure than what the Lord just said. You see what I'm saying? And that comes with the way that we live. If, am I living out his words? Or am I living out my desires? That's where your belief really kicks in. Amen? So since you believe, can you live for him and not live like him? Amen. We got to live the example he left for us. Amen? Amen? And so that's why I pose that question. Can't be once saved, always saved. Because if I walk away from the word, then I'm not living the way that I should. Try to stay saved without the Bible. <laughs> you ain't. You're going to live for God without his word. Oh, man. All right, let's just keep going, shall we? Because I got a little bit here. So, just had to break that down. And I'm not just throwing stones and, you know. But once saved, always saved, really. Once saved, always saved. If they walked away, are they still saved? Jesus said, I'm going to cut their portion with the hypocrites. And where they going is weeping and gnashing the teeth. That don't sound like someone's got saved from the penalty to come. All right? Is that okay tonight? All right. Now, don't leave no sweat marks on the pew. Amen. You, somebody's sweating in here, not because it's hot. <laughs> I just, I just playing. All right, so. Let's get into this. But he said, in the day when he looketh not for him in an hour that he is not aware of, 
and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. And there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. But we want to be a faithful and wise servant. Look at Paul. And this is this is what I wanted to get into as far as the faithful and wise servant, what we want to be found doing as we're waiting for our Lord. I mean, because we want to live accordingly. Amen. We want we're the faithful and wise servant loves sound doctrine. The faithful and wise servant loves to apply the word of the Lord, not just hear it. Amen. I'm sure, I mean, those people love, they, if they didn't love to hear the word of the Lord, they wouldn't have came miles upon miles to hear him. Amen. I mean, they came a long way, so long that the Lord said, I can't send them away fasting. <laughs> we need to feed these folks. Hello. And then the Lord had to talk about that. He's like, man, all y'all want is another sandwich. Y'all just came for a sandwich. Well, they don't like that message. Hello. Sometimes that's our motive coming to church. There's a cookout today. It's the fellowship. <laughs> I'd be there. They didn't hear the message, the whole sermon. They just smelled the food from the kitchen. Hello. They smell Brother Kelby's barbecue. That brother, he'd make a good priest. Let me tell you. Make a good preach, but listen. But this is what we want to be found doing, okay? Or is this all right? Let's get into this. He said, let every soul, right? Everybody got a soul here? I hope. Amen? All right, he said, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. He said the powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. Now I, I'm going to get into this because this is what we can also link into the next scriptures I'm going to show you, which is in 1 Thessalonians. So he said, let every soul be subject unto the higher power. For there is no power but of God. He said the power that be are ordained of God, whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. He said, and they that resisteth shall receive to themselves damnation. He said, for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. So right here he's saying, if you're doing good, why would the authority come against you if you're fulfilling the law? You're doing good works. You're making good decisions. But if you start making bad decisions and missing the mark. Hello, the authority is going to come against evil. Amen. Praise the Lord. But listen. He said, but to the evil. He said, wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? He said, do that which is good. He said, and thou shalt have praise of the same. He said, for he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he, is, he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God. A avenger to execute or avenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Amen. So right here he's saying, be in subjection to a higher power, or really the authority that God has given to his called servants or his ministers who execute against evil. Amen. So to fear. Amen. You don't need to fear pastor. Amen. I'm your brother. But what this is saying here is. You better just be in subjection to the word that pastor's preaching because it comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 
and you be in subjection to what I'm saying, but also be in subjection to me because of the position that God has called me to be in. Because it could get to the point where, where it shouldn't, but there has been times, not with me, but just saying it has happened, and there's warnings against it, but you don't come over familiar with your pastor. Come over, from, get over familiar. Hello. But also, as he's up preaching the word or he's teaching you, you honor what he's teaching and apply it. Amen. Honor and teach it and apply it. And he's helping you to make good decisions. And we're going to get into it, but living for God. Amen. So I'm going to be in subjection to what was taught, and I'm not going to go against it. Because I don't want to get to the point where I hear what's taught, but my pastor, if I'm still going to go my own way, he said, be afraid because don't think that he's going to hold back and not talk about it because he's required to. Because open rebuke is better than what? Secret love. Amen? An open rebuke is good so that others may fear, so that they don't get comfortable in thinking that they can hear the word and not apply it and still go and make an open show of a life that does not repent at the word. Is this making sense? So when I hear the word, I'm going to actively apply it in my life. Amen? Amen. I'm not going to keep going and then think in my head, pastor's not going to say nothing. And most of the time, don't think just because the pastor hasn't said anything, he doesn't know. Don't think that I don't know just because I didn't say anything. I just might be praying for you. Amen. Be praying for you. Amen. And so, but right here, and we're going to get into it because it's going to go into the next uh, scriptures of Thessalonians. But this is you being prepared and the pastor is helping you be prepared. But when you don't fear authority, you will continue being your own authority and you won't repent at the authority. Amen. So listen. So are not a terror to good works. So when you come, if you've been living right and you've been applying, you're excited to come to church. You're excited to hear the word. But if you ain't been applying and living right and you've been doing the fool, hello, I know I got some crazy names for it, but you've been doing the fool. You've been doing foolishness. You're not going to be comfortable in church. And you think pastors after you. Not, I'm just preaching the scriptures. Amen. All right. So listen, for he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. Amen. Don't bear the sword in vain. And when it has to be, it, it reminds me of what a pastor said. You know, uh, he said, it comes a time where you can't just start at the tail of the snake, you know, and chopping it and dealing with it. He said it comes a time where you got to cut the head off the snake. And you got to call some things out. And oh, thank God for bold men of God who would do that. Amen. Praise God. Thank God. And so you really got to deal with it. But he does not bear the sword in vain. Now, let me tell you something. Because he's talking about authority here. Boy, I done came against some authority in my life. I, my uncle who had authority in my life, who helped raise me, my uncle. Boy, I came up against a basketball coach. And you know how bad your coach, you fear your coach now. You don't pick Coach Pim. You mess with him. Hello, I came up against principles and was afraid. Amen. But let me tell you, 
there was nothing like standing before a man of God. Like, I've had to answer to a lot of authorities, but there was nothing like answering to a man of God when I did the fool. Hello, I did the fool in front of my coach, did the fool in front of my principal, in front of you know, family authorities that was over me, and I had to answer, and I was afraid. But there was nothing like standing before a man, my pastor. Nothing. Boy, and he got me squared away. Yes, he did. Hello? It's just the truth. Nothing like standing before men of God. Hello? Don't you know that Moses was about 80 years old when he came down from that mount and made them melt that calf or do whatever they're going to do and made them drink it? You know how frightening he probably looked even at 80 years old? To have that much authority and said, drink it. And they did. That's power. <laughs> All right. Some of y'all didn't even know that, huh? That's power. He said, now y'all going to drink it. I don't care what it does to your insides or how it comes out. <laughs> Never mind that. Moses didn't say that, but I kind of slipped that in there. Hello. Some things I just like to use my imagination, you know. Like when I get to heaven, I'm going I'm, I'm I'm to ask, you know, Mo Noah, why why'd you bring the flies, brother? Did you, you carried flies on that ark? You could have just, you know. <laughs> Hello, some of y'all, y'all be trying to have competition with your testimony. Boy, you know how Christians, we do like, oh, that's what you was delivered from? Well, this is where I came from before the Lord saved me. Hello, some of y'all, I was floating in a basket like Moses. Like, what, well, as a laundry basket. <laughs> you just, your testimony's like Moses, huh? You just floating in a basket. <laughs> this is where the Lord brought me from. Y'all competing. Hello? Sometimes that testimony service can be, can you stand up and testify, sister? And then another one, she's itching to testify to one upper. Hey, well, it happens. Yes, it does. Oh, man. Let's get back on track, okay? <laughs> Floating in a basket like Moses. But he's just saying, let every soul be subject unto the higher power. And we're going to get into why, because he's helping you stay prepared. Amen? For the coming of the Lord. But he says this. For he's the minister of God, attending continually upon this very thing. He said, render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. He said, owe no man anything but to love one another. He said, but to love one another. These are things that we must be found doing. Amen. Found doing. Submitting to our pastors, submitting to those that God has placed over our souls. Amen. That's one I just dealt with, submitting to your pastor. Amen. And having a reverential fear. Amen. Because he, he does not bear the sword in vain. Haven't you noticed that I will preach? Because I have to. Amen. And I'd preach to myself. Amen. Anyway, let's keep going because I got to get through this. But he's saying, oh, no, man. Oh, no, man. I don't want to be found. Not paying my tithe. Oh, folks don't like that. Amen. But I pay my tithe. I'd give in an offering. Amen. Because now you're giving into what God is doing. Amen. You're giving into it. But oh, no, man. You're giving into it. If a brother keeps picking you up for church, 
for six months and you never gave him gas money? And he's been helping you get to the house of the Lord so that you can grow spiritually? And you never helped him? Something's wrong with that. You got to throw him a little something like, here, brother. You've been helping me get the word and I've become a better Christian. Uh, amen. A better person. Amen. And I thank you. Now, I'm working on my car now. But I want to help you out for coming to get me because you've been making a sacrifice for me. Amen. Oh, no, man. All right. Is this all right? But he said, oh, no, man, anything. He said, but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Then he said, he said, for this, thou shalt not commit adultery. You don't commit adultery because you love your wife. Amen. And you don't want to work ill towards your wife. You love your wife. I'm not going to commit that act because of love. He said love is the fulfilling of the law. So when the Lord comes back, I want to be found loving everybody. Amen. At being at peace with all men. Amen. Having nothing in my heart against nobody. But love is what kept my marriage pure. Amen. So these are things that we must be found. Amen. But he said, keeping the law for this, thou shalt not commit adultery because I love my wife. Thou shalt not kill because I love my neighbor. I'm not going to kill somebody. I'm not going to take somebody's life from the earth. I love my neighbor. Amen. It's love. Love fulfills the law. Thou shalt not steal. I'm not going to steal because love causes me to respect my neighbor because he worked hard for what he has. I'm not going to steal from the store or steal to get what I want because the love of my God, is he's going to provide for me. Amen. I'm just told to seek ye first. Amen. And all these things shall be added. Amen. God loves me. He's my provider. Isn't that Jehovah Jireh? You still believe in Jehovah Jireh. That means if Jehovah Jireh loves you, he'll provide. Amen. That's what God did in the wilderness. He got the children of Israel in a place where they could not provide for themselves. They were in the wilderness. And he provided water, food, and their shoes didn't wear out. Amen? Because he loved them. Amen, is this okay tonight? So I'm not going to steal. I'm not going to bear false witness. Amen? I'm not going to bear false witness. I'm not going to lie on somebody with knowing the truth that they're not guilty. I'm not going to lie so that they could be put away. Hello. And I'm not going to help somebody or be a partaker in another man's sin just because they feel some type of way about somebody. And then they come to me and say, don't you remember? Didn't they do this to me? Remember, I told you this, the one right here. Remember, I told you this, what they did. Well, I need you to come stand by my side. And then when it's asked, you got to really say, well, to be honest, I was just told, but I never seen it. I never seen him do it. I can't fully agree. I don't know. But I'm not going to say, yep, it's true. When I never saw it. Ooh, man, it got all right. Thou shalt not covet. Amen. Thou shalt not covet. But then he says this, and if there be any other commandment, if there's any other commandment, amen, if there's any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love. I'm sorry, let me go to it for you. I'm just over here reading it. 
He said, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. For love worketh no ill towards his neighbor. Amen. I'm not going to sin against anybody or I'm fulfilling the law all through love. Because love does not work ill towards its neighbor. Amen. Okay. He said, and that, this is what I'm saying. This is what we must be found doing. And then he's going to deal with this, which we're going to get to. He said, and that, knowing the time, that now it is a high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Your Lord is much closer. He said, the night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day. And this is what we should not be found doing. He said, not in rioting, in drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, unbridled lust. He said, not in strife and envying. We don't want to be found with this in our heart when the Lord returns. We don't want to be found in drunkenness and unbridled lust and covetousness when the Lord comes. But he said, put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the one right here. And make not provisions for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. And that other servant who was evil made provisions for the flesh and said, I want to do this so bad. He had an unbridled lust. I want to do this so bad. And he convinced himself, wait, my Lord delayeth this coming. And he went to eat and drink with the drunken. But Paul says, don't make provisions for the flesh. During the time of you waiting and being a faithful and wise servant, don't make provisions for the flesh. Amen. Some Christians, they always want to figure out, man, how do I keep slipping up? How do I keep doing this? Well, you got to realize that you're probably putting yourself in the position for it to happen. Amen. If you're, not, if, hello? Don't go to the smoke pit and think that since you're trying to overcome it, I could just be there with people. No. You avoid it. You avoid these things so that you don't fall into temptation. I'm not going to make provisions for it. I'm not going to get so, see how close I can get to the line without stepping over. Amen. Not making provisions for it. All right. So listen to this. He said, furthermore, or finally, finally. Oh, dear God. Sorry about that. This thing is wild. This thing's a law unto itself. Okay, but he said, furthermore, or finally, then we beseech you. We're encouraging you, begging you, brethren. He said, and exhort, encourage you by the Lord Jesus Christ, that as ye have received of us, how ye ought to walk. And to please God. Have you received of pastor how you ought to walk and please God? Amen. This is fitting right what I just read in Romans. Because that's my job. You know, I remember I was in Bible college and we had to write. Um, I can't remember what class it was, but we had to write, you know, um, you know, our calling, whether it was a pastor or worker, or helper, whatever it was. And and um, or wherever you would be. I don't know. It's just. Just laying your heart out on a paper. And I wrote, I, I remember writing, like, I believe God has called me to be a pastor. And when I would go out into a city or a town and blah, 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 and, and you know, handing out flyers and all of that. And, and I remember I got it handed back to me. And I read it. And then I messaged the teacher. I said, sir, I read my paper that you got back to me. I said, I wrote all of that of being a pastor, pastoring. But I never wrote that. 
I'm there to teach them how to live for God. I said, and I'd fail them if I don't teach them how to have a relationship with God. See, it's more than just starting a church. See, it's more than sometimes just sermons and pulpits. It's really loving people and teaching them and showing them how to live for God. You think Paul just came there to start a church and leave? No, he loved them. He took them as his own. And he even said it, Timothy, mine own son in the faith. Titus, you're my own son. I've birthed you into the faith. You're a son to me. He loved them. He spent time with them and showed them how to live for God. So he said, furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus that ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God. So ye would abound more and more. We're showing you how to live for God. And we're encouraging you to keep applying what we wrote. Because we want you to keep growing in God. But you can hinder yourself or keep yourself in idle position if you stop applying what we taught you. You don't want to get to a place where you turn a deaf ear because you don't want to live what we taught. You're going to get yourself to a place where you may injure your mind. And keep yourself in a place where you're not growing anymore. But he said, we're encouraging you, exhorting you to walk as we taught you to walk. Listen to this. So ye would abound more and more. He said, for ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not giving you my commandments. I'm giving you the commandments of the Lord. He said, for this is the will of God. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. That he said that you should abstain from fornication. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. And this is where a preacher may get the most contention. It's because then we begin to teach you how to live for God while at the same time you may be holding on to the world and the way that the world lives and the way that the world does things. But the way that the world does things is not the way that God wants things to be done. And that's within our living also. Amen. And he says this. We taught you when we came how to possess your vessel, how to live. Amen. He said, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles, which know not God. This concupiscence is a unlawful lust of desiring something that you cannot have. But he says, the other Gentiles that you live around, they don't fear God and they're a law unto themselves. So they're going to get whatever they want to get. They have no fear of God before their eyes. He says, don't live like that. And he said that no man go beyond and defraud his brother. In any matter. He said, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned, forewarned you and testified. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. Get this, and I've taught you holiness. I've taught you the way that we should live, didn't I? And after I taught you, he therefore that despiseth, despiseth not pastor, He that despiseth who was there listening 
did not despise pastor, even though pastor taught. He said, but you despised God. Who hath given, who have also given unto us his holy spirit. Now get this. I love this part because after I teach the word, this is what brings me comfort because I got to preach heavy sometimes. But this is what brings me comfort. And I'm about to close real quick. I've been a little lengthy. But after I preach, and even though people may not apply it or they're at war and they're despising, thinking they're despising me, but they're not, I find comfort because I know <laughs> that the Holy Ghost, which he said God has given us, is going to be there teaching them and convicting them not to go against what was taught. So I got backup. <laughs> Amen, I got backup. And so they're not going to be fighting with me over what I said because the Holy Ghost is going to be there, which God gave us. Amen. From what we hear, the Holy Ghost is there going to be teaching you. Amen. And then when you just go against what was said, there's a conviction, isn't there? It's the Spirit of God convicting you, saying, you know what? What pastor said was what God wanted it to be said. Amen. So I find comfort because I got the Holy Ghost backing me up, and he's my comforter. Amen. Amen. So you're not offending pastor. I just want you to know, like Paul said, they're not despising man after the man or pastor taught them how they should live in this world. They're despising God. But listen, he said, but as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you. For as ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And indeed, ye do it toward all the brethren which are in Macedonia. He said, but we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more. And that ye study to be quiet and do your own business and to work with your own hands as we command it. That ye may walk honestly towards them that are without, and that ye may have lack of nothing. He said, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Now, this is what I wanted to talk about. He just said, when we came to you, we taught you how to live for God. Amen. And as you're living for God, apply these things. Amen. So that you don't hinder your walk. Amen. So that you don't get so carnal in your Christianity. To where you're not even really living for him, even though you're confessing him. We want you to live for him. We just don't want you to come and worship and feel good. We want you to live for him so that you can feel good in his presence when he calls you home. You want to hear well done, amen? Not, oh, me. You see what I'm saying? So listen. He said, that which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. So what he's saying here, he's going to let us know what's going to happen to those or giving us information or encouraging us because I'm sure you also think in all of us, amen, we know some faithful people that stayed faithful to God, amen, and kept God's word, practiced it, lived a holy life, and but they died. Amen. They died in the Lord. And they did not die in vain. Hello. People think Christians that live holy and sanctified. Hello. Because some folks will say, you don't have to live like that. You don't have to consecrate your life. You can you have a little bit of fun. Hello. Then years later, you see where they are. And you, you be like, how fun was that? Amen. So I could say, hey, the way that I live. I live a good life. Amen. It's unto the Lord. But anyway, he's going to just encourage us about those that have fallen asleep, who kept the ways of the Lord, who died in walking the way that they were commanded to walk or live. Amen. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, Jesus that died and rose again, even so 
them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord, coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. But get this, he said, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So what did I teach you through this whole study of the faithful and wise servant? You see, one servant that stayed faithful and waiting and was found doing what he was left doing and living. But that other servant said, my Lord, delay at this coming, went back to eat and drink with the drunken. It's sad. You may even know folks that have done that. But what I'm simply saying is here. I just shared with you the way that we're supposed to live and how we're called to live. And as pastor teaches you how to live for God. Be in subjection. Amen. Amen. Because all I am here is to teach you. That's what Paul said. He said, man, I'm like in a straight betwixt two, having a ready to depart. I'm ready to go to the Lord. But he said, it's needful for me to abide in the flesh for you. Amen. And pastors here abiding in the flesh, called of God to preach the gospel and teach you how to possess your vessel in sanctification and honor, not giving yourself up to worldly lusts and fame and notoriety and accolades, but to really live for God in a holy life. Amen. So the things that I have taught you in this study, don't resist them and twist the scriptures and say, you know what? I believe God, and that's his word. And also I have the Holy Ghost convicting me when I go against what pastor said. And what I don't want you to do is I begin to close. Because he said, we also have his spirit. You don't want to get to the place to where you're warring against what pastor has taught or any, even you just reading on your own. Because right after this, the Holy Ghost is going to come. And when you go against it and miss the mark, he's going to convict you. But if you get yourself to a place where now you're numb to the conviction of the Holy Ghost. It's a bad place to be in. Where nothing convicts you anymore. Nothing that's taught. And Jesus said, there's a portion. I'm going to cut their portion with the hypocrites. So, let's be faithful and wise servants. Amen. And I want to close in prayer for you and all that are watching right online because we want to be found faithful not just in our words but in our life and application of the scriptures and repenting at what <laughs> we're going against as we hear it preached if I ain't been doing it I'm going to repent I'm going to believe that my pastor has waited in God's presence, and he knows. Even when I can't understand, I trust him. You trust me? Well, let's make it to heaven, folks, as faithful and wise servants. Heavenly Father, I'm so thankful for these people who are so brave, God, to live for you in a holy life in these days. Not following the social norms in the way that the world wants to live, but they want to live your word. And God, I ask, Lord, that you'd help them apply what is taught as they bring their lives under the subjection 
of your word. Help them to bear it and stomach it, God, and to turn from their ways that they thought were right and apply your ways. Because we want to be found as faithful and wise servants. Being found doing and leaving nothing left undone. God, we be sure to give you all the glory as you give us the grace and the help in the time of need. And we be sure to give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen.